biscuits and gravy, coffee and donuts. Breakfast wine, it's not just for breakfast. Today, we're talking brunch, typically served from 11 to 3. 3.05 because when others will stop serving you at 3 o'clock, we'll continue. From traditional to creative. Cornmeal and the waffle with that chili dish, eggs on top of that. Savory to sweet. No. <laughs> she will let me have a piece of the donut. Old fashioned diners, chic uptown cafes, and south side reinventions all offer a little taste of adventure. The great thing about this show, Erin, is that I always feel like I'm experiencing something new. Sushi is one of my favorite meals, but I've never had it for breakfast. It's breakfast, lunch, and maybe even dinner, all rolled up into one. Here at Garage East, um, we uh, make something we call a breakfast wine, and, and it's um, really great, it's fun. We take fresh produce, we fresh squeeze it, mix it with some white wines and um, carbonate it. We put it on tap if you want to enjoy it here, or you can take a can to go and um, enjoy your wine wherever you're at. You know what, breakfast wine, it's not just for breakfast, you have it all day long. We put it in a can instead of a bottle, and. Um, a little bit different, a little bit outside of the box, but you know, like Arizona's kind of that way as well. We um, like to utilize um, grapefruits and a little bit of oranges. The tartness of the grapefruit um, just makes it really pop and explode, and it, it makes it delicious. It's a play on words from the French word garagiste. It um, kind of a, in the Bordeaux region of France, they. Uh, mom and pop places started branching off of the big established wineries and um, it was kind of a derogatory term they were like oh you garage yeast you'll never make it well they started making really good small batch wines in their barns and their farms and their garages we're going to highlight those things that the state can give us through farming and through the vineyards and the wineries you know we're going to do things a little bit different um, and if you can kind of experiment with us with your mind, you know, we're going to show you something that you've probably never seen before. We make these donuts from scratch every morning and I get here between three and four to do this every day as does my team. My name is Casey Hopkins and I am the head baker at Welcome Chicken and Donuts. You might say these donuts are a little outside the box. I really like the pickled grape and Parmesan shortbread donut. How do you go, wow, I think that pistachio would taste good on raspberry. Pretty much leave all the uh, donut flavors up to Casey, our head baker over here. Um, she is using stuff that's in season or uh, she may be in influenced by another dish. You know, she uh, recently had a, a Moscow Mule donut in the case. Wayne Coates is the operations director. Describe yeah. some of the flavors. Uh, absolutely. This one here uh, we've had in the case basically since we opened. This is a yeast donut. Uh, we make a, a dark chocolate glaze, uh, rose water meringue there, and uh, pistachios. So this one's got a lot of flavor, a lot of nice textures. You know, uh, now that I touch it, I get to eat it. That's dibs for sure. <laughs> Uh, the most popular or the one that sells out first every day is the maple bacon here. Uh, we chop up bacon and put it on top of a, a, a real maple glaze um, with a really soft uh, yeast donut. sort of melts in your mouth but has some of the nice crunch. Now do you have people who just come in and say, you know what, I don't want the frills. I'm just a regular donut kind of girl. I just want a maple glazed donut or a rainbow sprinkle donut. And Absolutely. Uh, we do have the traditional donuts in the case every day, you know, the classic uh, chocolate glaze, uh, maple ring, of course. We have to have one of those in the case. Uh, we do the rainbow sprinkles. I eat one of those almost every day. Almost every day. And it's probably no coincidence that this building used to be a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, we do Korean-style fried chicken uh, starting at 10.30 every day. Uh, that is a twice-fried, uh, almost tempura-style batter. KFC reinvented with plenty of sauce. We've got green chili, Japanese barbecue, and Chinese herbs. 
but instead of a biscuit? With the plain hot cake donut that we serve with the combos, it's similar to like a cornbread or okay. like a buttermilk biscuit would be with dinner. So uh, it really balances out all of the flavors. You know, you got the salty and savory uh, and the plain hot cake that uh, has some zest in it. So it really pops and uh, does a, a nice combination. Welcome Chicken and Donuts is at the corner of Buckeye and 16th Street. So tell me a little bit about this location. I've heard it's sure. called the Golden Gate Barrio, but it's a little off the beaten path. We think the, the south side is really up and coming. What, why are people so crazy about donuts? It's, it's a really happy food. Uh, you know, you, you can't be too sad eating a donut and uh, you know pairing that with a, a nice cup of coffee or, or even a, a cold beer, uh, which we offer here as well. You know, it's just something to eat and to feel good. Two hands, just hold on tight. Oh. Mm. Yep. Mm. I knew you'd like that one. Mm. Wow. It's got a little bite to it with the bacon. Mm -hmm. It's finger licking good. started with what my catering clients wanted and then became what the neighborhood wanted. Regional American we call it, which allows us to do anything. Hi, I'm Jennifer Russo and I am the owner and chef of the market and also Jennifer's Catering. Tucked on the side of an antique mall near 36th Street Indian School. Arcadia Light, they like to call it, you know. It's quickly becoming a hot spot for lunch, dinner and weekend brunch, or whatever you'd like to call it. I think it's really approachable. I think it is a lot of classics with a twist. I really like a deconstructed feel of things, but it's comfortable, recognizable. I don't want to scare anyone off with anything. A shabby, chic vibe that's all about sharing. I love our meats and cheese boards, the charcuterie. Really nice, fun to share. Uh, I like any food that's social. While you'll see the French influence on the menu, there are some distinctly Southwest dishes, like this a waffle with chili and sriracha salt. So our chili and waffles is um, a whole combination of our local products. Um, Kipri beans Now, there. where did they ever get the idea to pair chili with a waffle? Fun. Was that too? It was last season. I had local ingredients and I wanted that brunch item that was just filling. Cornmeal and the waffle, you know, with that chili dish, eggs on top of that. I mean, you can't beat it. Jennifer did say she likes to put a twist on things, and she likes to shake them up as well. I switch out the menu twice a year. Ensuring it's always seasonal and local. We bring in a lot of local product. Um, I like to use a lot of local vendors to support the community. We just started doing cookies and milk, which is kind of fun. So super, like that's what you think of, like I know it, that it's not anything out of the box here, but they're the best cookies and the best milk. The only thing I know is food. <laughs> Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. The great thing about this show, Erin, is that I always feel like I'm experiencing something new. Sushi is one of my favorite meals, but I've never had it for breakfast. <laughs> so, so you're treating me to something new yes, today. Yes, morning sushi. <laughs> so, but this is a different kind of sushi. This isn't something that I would experience in my traditional sushi no, restaurants, correct? No, it definitely is not. We are going to make some nori rolls using all vegetables. The uprooted kitchen at Barnon and Gilbert is completely plant-based. Owners, Chatiner and Romanoff, use all organic fruits and vegetables mostly from the farm at Agritopia. They serve breakfast, lunch, and the occasional dinner. They even offer classes. This is one of the most popular things that we serve at our restaurant. So we are going to, I'm going to show you how to roll a sushi roll. It is absolutely easier than you think. Um, is this seaweed? This is seaweed, and we use an organic nori, which is See a dried seaweed. Okay. Um, so that's what we're gonna kind of use as our base. And then 
A lot of times sushi has is made with rice. Mm -hmm. Well, we are not going to use rice. We're going to use um, organic quinoa. And to make it sticky, we have made a cashew cream, which in the kind of vegan vegetarian world is super popular. You blend up cashews and make it into a cream, and we add it to our quinoa. There are not many places that do quinoa sushi. So I'm going to show you on mine, and then we're going to have you do yours. So you can just take a little scoop of that. And here's some water to kind of dip your fingers in. And we're going to kind of press our sticky quinoa instead of our sticky rice. Sticky quinoa. So yes. uprooted is vegetarian or vegan? We are almost completely vegan. We have a few items on our menu that contain honey. So that actually, anything with honey in it would not be considered vegan. So I know there's a lot of misperceptions out there or people have a hard time, I, and I'm one of them understanding the difference between vegetarian versus vegan. Can you explain right. that? So with vegan, um, you would not find any meat, dairy, or eggs. If you are vegetarian, uh, people who are vegetarian do consume some dairy and sometimes some eggs. Um, but at our restaurant, we have completely no, uh, no dairy, no meat, no eggs. There are some really, really fun, creative, and flavorful things that you can do with vegetables, grains, beans, so. Fun with vegetables. Yes. That could be we, a new we show. We have fun with vegetables every day here at the Upper <laughs> Kitchen, yes. Well, that looks beautiful. And it really does not look that beautiful. <laughs> and here, but, if you would like okay. to wash your hands off. All right. So we've made a little bit of a spicy slaw with some sesame oil and some sriracha and some lemon juice, and we're just gonna kind of put that on our sushi roll. We can add a couple sticks of cucumbers. You can kind of just place them two or three across like that. And then we can add some organic sweet potatoes. And then we always, we love putting avocado in our sushi. So this is a little messy as well. I love avocado. If you want to so. put a little, you know, bit of avocado across your roll as well. Now we're going to get ready to roll. Mine okay. is so much <laughs> bigger than of okay. I like a lot of stuff so packed into my sushi. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull this up and you're going to kind of, you're going to tuck, you're going to have to kind of tuck all of your ingredients. Oh. You're going to pull over, yes. Well, could you have told over. me that before? <laughs> then maybe I wouldn't have, you know, overpowered. This is going to be... I'm going to help this you. This is called a super size sushi. I'm going to help you. And I'll get you started and then you can finish it. So we're going to pull that in there and now pull this out and Clearly I need See, to go back like to that. Sushi 101. <laughs> it takes a couple tries. It does. It. And then we're gonna tuck that and you just keep pulling and tucking. And once you get to the end. Pulling and tucking, <laughs> there's a technique here. <laughs> you're it's bad enough you're making me cook, but now yeah. you're making me pull and tuck? If you wet your end right here, then it will start to I don't think like, I have an end there left. There you go, okay. And then you can wet that, and then it will stick to itself. Your nori will start to stick to itself. So let's see how yours looks. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. Let's see how hers is the perfect sushi roll. Now let's see how Robin's looks. It's oh, not it, bad. it didn't even take, it's not did bad. it? Did it even take? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Gonna tuck it just like that. Beautiful. That and doesn't look. It doesn't so look bad. bad at all. Absolutely not at all. This is for people with larger appetites. Exactly. That's the large portion. Yours is for <laughs> yours is an individual portion. Mine's for a family of four. I want to know, are you willing to try one of the ones I made? Oh, absolutely. Of okay, course. Okay, let's switch. Okay. You, well, try, you try mine, mine. and I'll if try you want yours. To put a little bit. We have a little spicy tamari. Here's a spoon if you want to put some on okay. yours. I've never eaten sushi, I think, on camera. Okay, I was just gonna because say, it's gonna, gonna be, be really messy. I'm just gonna take a little bite. I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. But you know, <laughs> I'm a large. confident woman. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. Okay, all, all right. right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know how confident I am right now. Wait a minute, you even eat neater than I do. <laughs> You cook and eat her, you eat yeah. her, look at that. It was delicious. That is yeah. really good. <laughs> good. That's really delicious. Thank That's you. That's terrific. Uh, Thank you. Thank you um, very much. I will, uh, I think instead of getting the recipe, I think I'll just come just here come and have and you make it for me. I'm Mitzi Vantine and I manage the Bisbee Breakfast Club. <laughs> From the facade, it may look practically abandoned, but come inside and you'll find this joint is jumping. When you come in, people are amazed at what they're gonna get in here. It has the look and feel of a 50s diner, but the Bisbee Breakfast Club is the new kid on the block. Back in the day, this was a Rexall drugstore. Original tin roof, everything's original. The only thing that we've done is the floors. 
And in the back area, we used to have what used to be a clothing department store back in the day, Sloan and Wilner. Now it makes for an amazing restaurant. We serve classic breakfast, uh, Greek, Zorba. We have the Chorizo Rancheros, which is south of the border. And also we are very, very popular for our biscuits and gravy. It's an eclectic menu with epic portions. When we bring them out to the table, most people are amazed. They're about the size of a plate. Homemade, from scratch, and very good. So good, in fact, when Southerns find their way to the BBC, they say their biscuits and gravy... The best they've ever had. And being from the South, that says something. They also serve up south of the border and a combo fit for a king and queen. Huevos Rancheros, another very popular menu item, Copper Queen Skillet. It's a skillet with everything in it. Scrambled eggs, ham, sausage, bacon, covered in gravy and served with a biscuit on the side. If you leave here hungry, it's your own fault. And you cannot go to an old school diner and not get a slice of Americana. We have chocolate cream, coconut cream, banana cream, chocolate banana cream, cherry, apple, mixed berry, pecan, strawberry rhubarb. Oh, and every Friday, it's cheesecake. The flavor, always the baker's surprise. But you better get down here quick. The baker delivers the pies once a week, and when they're gone, they're gone. You may find yourself ordering dessert first. The BBC serves breakfast and lunch every day from 7 a.m. until 3.05. 3.05 because when others will stop serving you at 3 o'clock, we'll continue. And with portions like these, who needs dinner? The Bisbee Breakfast Club is a place where big taste always comes with a small side of nostalgia. An amazing spot to be. Brings you back in time. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. Meet the F-16 pilot who is providing early morning fuel to Litchfield Park. As an F-16 fighter pilot and instructor, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Rassos may gas up midair but he fuels up back at ground control. Did I get a coffee in there? <gasps> His coffee and wine bar in Litchfield Park. In 2005, Sean and his wife Tara moved from Germany to the West Valley. They were having a tough time finding a fun place to hang out. I decided that the West Valley needed a great place to hang out, and so I built a restaurant. Boy, if I knew what I was getting into then. It is way more dangerous to own a restaurant than it is to fly an F-16. Six years later, ground control is practically on autopilot. So we roast our own coffee, we make our own gelato. We've got a tremendous selection of wine. It's awfully fun to be able to give people something unique. My proudest accomplishment in the military was graduating high enough to be able to go fly an F-16. My biggest accomplishment in the restaurant business is being open after five years. <laughs> so what's next for this F-16 fighter pilot turned instructor turned restaurant tour? I'll stop right there. Pizza and wine. <laughs> will wake you up in the morning, like the sound of a train horn and a freshly roasted cup of coffee. Macy's been here this year for 33 years. Um, it's Arizona's first coffee roaster, so it's pretty ingrained into the state coffee culture. Must be, as it's pretty much standing room only this morning. What is the Macy's special? It's hot chocolate espresso. It's pretty sweet. You can make you a mocha too that will be less sweet. Let's go for a mocha. Want a mocha? Do you want Let's a single, go. double, or triple? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> how about. Oh, should I really do a double? Yeah. Okay. I already have four shots. All right, let's do a double. Jacob, by the way, is also a drummer in a band, so he probably needs those four shots to help him wake up from last night's gig. For me, however, this double Look may out. put me over the edge. I love this. Look how these guys do this. That's like a work of art. 
Everything is entirely 100% vegetarian. It's, and it's become very popular for that reason, actually. The vegetarian biscuits and gravy is a huge hit. People love it. Hey, why not? I'll eat what the locals eat. Is there a technique for eating this? I think you just go for it. That's got a kick to it. It's good. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for keeping me out of work. <laughs> I like it. What is Eddie's favorite dish? It's a simple thing, actually, a cheeseburger. But I would think that a burger or a cheeseburger has to be one of the easiest things to no, make. No, no, it's not. The, the application is simple, but you got to know what to do. Okay. So that's what I'm going to show you today. All right. First of all, 80-20 ground chuck. And I'm just going to take a bundle of this and show you that. The optimum word there is chuck. That's chuck. from the shoulder. Because an animal pulls from his shoulders. When you pull from your shoulders, you build up muscle and fat. That's where flavor comes from. i got to season it. I'm going to season it with a bunch of salt. I'm gonna season it again with granulated garlic, and I'm gonna season it Worcestershire sauce. Okay, oh, okay. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, I'm gonna put that That's in That's a it. twist. It is a twist. And I'm gonna mix that this. That smells kinda good too. Doesn't that smell good? And I'm gonna take the burger, and I'm gonna just form it in my hand. I'm gonna throw these on the grill, and they're not gonna be thick because I'm doing them on a griddle. I think you can make any burger taste good, but the key is not flipping them too much. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put a piece of cheese on there, and we're gonna let them cook is like that. Is that Swiss cheese? It is Swiss cheese. Oh, is this a breakfast burger? You asked me my favorite way to have a burger. The egg sort of adds a nice sauce to it, Robin. I have a nice griddle bun. I'm gonna take a piece of lettuce. I like romaine. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Okay. okay. The tomato on the bottom, why is the tomato on the bottom? Uh, because how many times when you eat a burger and you put the bun on top. And then the tomato falls out. Mm -hmm. Right, I got it. See, there's a method behind this. And a little onion. A little red onion. I'm gonna take this off. Oh, oh. my God, now comes the best part. Oh, it's oh. so beautiful. See, that's medium rare to me. Look at the egg dripping out of there. Let me Is see that... if it's really perfect. I'll okay, take yeah. a good bite. Okay, I need a big bite. Come here. Hold on, sweet. How come you do it and there's nothing mm -hmm. on you? Mm -hmm. Is that not delicious? Chicken and donuts, waffles and chili, vegetable sushi and breakfast wine. We put it in a can instead of a bottle and um, a little bit different, a little bit outside of the box, but you know what, Arizona's kind of that way as well. And it's thinking outside the box that's turning a favorite weekend meal into an innovative experience. Yeah, I already know. Please say no more. <laughs> There are no words to describe. I'm oh, really good. Thank you. I'm mm, really good. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. I'm Robin Sewell and we'll see you on the next Arizona Highways.